Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. IT begins. Owner of huge clothing company just hit the NFL right where it hurts. Alan Jones is the CEO of Hardwick Clothing and check into cash payday loan company. As of Tuesday, he is tired of sponsoring the wardrobes and advertising of the NFL. Hardwick Clothing is one of America's oldest suit maker. In a recent statement, he said, our companies will not condone unpatriotic behavior. According to the Times Free Press, in Cleveland, Tennessee, a businessman named Alan Jones was showing off his new Hardwick clothing brand suits provided as a wardrobe for NBC's on-air talent during NFL football games. Jones is the CEO of payday lending chain Check Into Cash and is the owner of Hardwick Clothes. He texted the reason for his decision to Def.com. When I see Colin Kaepernick lecturing the oppressed wearing a Fidel Castro t-shirt, you realize the hypocrisy to this stupidity. I love America. They have the right to protest and I have the right to turn off the channel and place our ads elsewhere. The next time someone asks the public to finance a stadium, this will have a very long-term effect. These guys should really be the lead plaintiffs in the head injury cases that's the only jury that will find sympathy. Share this if you want the NFL to stop disrespecting our flag and our national anthem. This is your final message before all us patriots leave you forever. Flag kneelers are breaking the law. This representative just pointed out the punishment. Tennessee's representative Marsha Blackburn just made sure everyone knows that Trump is right about how Americans are supposed to behave when our national anthem is played. Monday, Rep. Blackburn filed a resolution to remind Americans that federal law addresses how we are to act during the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. Pursuant to Section 301B of Title 36 of the U.S. Code, Armed services members in uniform should give the military salute at the first note of the song and maintain that position until the last note. Armed forces members and veterans who are present but not in uniform may do the same, and all other persons present should face the flag and stand at attention with their right hand over the heart, and men not in uniform, if applicable, should remove their headdress with their right hand and hold it at the left shoulder, the hand being over the heart. Emphasis added. When the flag is not displayed, all present should face toward the music and act in the same manner they would if the flag were displayed. Unfortunately, this is one of those laws with no teeth. So no one will go to jail for disobeying it. But the fact that it's set out in federal law says everything any American needs to know, don't you think? And it proves Trump is in the right. If you will follow this law, and want your friends and family to know and follow it, too, Get this shared till it's viral, patriots. Comment it's the law. H. T. The Tennessean. Nothing is safe MSNBC just insulted all Christians in this sick video that just went viral. It's easy to understand why a biased news network would attack President Trump. But blatant disrespect towards all Christians around the world is beyond reprehensible. MSNBC and anchor Lawrence O'Donnell purposely cut off Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore's victory speech on Wednesday. Why? Because he was talking too much about God. Moore had just defeated his primary opponent Senator Luther Strange, and was simply counting his blessings and showing gratitude. Advertisement we are one nation under God and we can become one nation unified, Moore said during the victory speech. There's so much division in our society. But we are all created in the image of God. Religion aside, that's a beautiful message. Moore wants people to work together and make America great again, part of which being the freedom to express your faith. I recall what Harry Truman said in his inaugural address, he continued. The American people stand firm in the faith which has inspired this nation from its beginning.
we believe that all people are created in the image of God and from that faith we will not be moved. O'Donnell interrupted at that point, cutting back to the MSNBC studio with a shocking explanation. Okay, we're going to come back into the studio for this conversation, O'Donnell said. What I've been told by the control room is that he has been speaking about God, and about God almost exclusively with I think no real reference to his opponent or Donald Trump. There it is again, the major media's need to create news about President Trump. This was coverage of Moore's victory speech, but there clearly wasn't enough drama or feuding to justify hearing about the man's faith. MSNBC may have forgotten, but this is a Christian nation. Many Americans, including the first family, consider faith an integral part of their home. American voters also need to hear from elected officials so they know exactly who and what they're supporting. If MSNBC can't do either of those things, why be on the air at all? If you think this was way over the line, let us know below and share this before it's buried. Sources, DailyCaller.com Chuck Grassley just dropped a bombshell on Senate floor, he leaked Comey's worst secret. The Senate Legal Council is now preparing subpoenas for two senior FBI officials that the Justice Department is blocking committee members from interviewing. There has been a year of evidence of corruption this year. Senator Chuck Grassley just dropped a bombshell during Senate hearing in the video above. CNN just reported last week that the Justice Department was preventing individuals from showing up before the Senate Judiciary Committee to answer questions about firing James Comey, it cited Robert Mueller's investigation. Grassley has been joined by California Senator Dianne Feinstein to repeatedly ask for two senior FBI officials, Carl Gottus and James Rubitsky to sit down for an interview on the Comey firing as part of the committee's probe. We've got subpoenas at the Senate Council Office, Grassley told CNN Wednesday, referring to the Senate office that would draft the subpoenas. When we get done there, I'm gonna have to consult with Senator Feinstein. Share this everywhere right now. James Comey is a criminal and perjured himself. This has to get out now. The media is not covering this at all. It seems crooked Comey made up his mind on Hillary months before. Thanks for reading. James Mattis was just targeted in vicious attack, look who's after him. Early Wednesday morning, just hours after our Secretary of Defense, James Mattis, landed in Afghanistan, a rocket attack happened at the airport where he'd just landed in Kabul. This was a surprise visit by Mattis, which is really troubling, considering the fact that the Taliban and ISIS are both taking credit for the attack. 40 to 45 rockets hit the airport less than two hours after Mattis was right there. Thank God, Mattis was out of harm's way by the time the rockets hit. In fact, no U.S. personnel were injured. Three people allegedly involved in the attack were killed by Afghan special forces, according to an Afghan Interior Ministry spokesperson. Mattis has already spoken, saying an attack on an international airport anywhere is a criminal act by terrorists. He said it's designed to go after innocent people to make some sort of statement. I'm very troubled by the fact that Mattis' visit was unannounced. So how did the attackers know he was going to be there? Obviously, thank God, they didn't have the timing of his arrival just right. But it was way too close for comfort. So it isn't only the Taliban, ISIS that's after him? Or someone closer? If you're glad Mattis is okay, and if you want this looked into further, as in, who leaked, please, share and comment find the leak. H. T. A. B. C. News Sarah Palin just teamed up with Judge Moore and what she did will change everything. Sarah Palin has been a big supporter of Judge Roy Moore who just won the GOP special primary election for Senate in Alabama. She told People, before the election, that a vote for Moore was not a vote against the president. She said, 
it's a vote for the people's agenda that elected the president. And she was right. In fact, Trump called Judge Moore after he won, to congratulate him, even though he had come out in support of Luther Strange. Following Moore's victory, Palin gushed on Facebook, saying this. We can win this war. She also said this, he's a good man and he's got great character. Yes, this is what we need. We don't need the lobbyist mentality in the Senate, because that lobbyist mentality has too often proven to the people that special interests that will enrich that lobbyist will come before the people's interest. We can't afford any more of that. That has led us to the $20 trillion debt that we're in. That has led us to the government growth and overreach that we see. So, no, we don't need to elect more of the problem, we're not going to solve the problem by electing more of it. And, like myself, she loved the fact that he rode horseback to vote. As a horse lover, cowgirl myself, that was my favorite part, for sure. If you agree with Palin, that Judge Moore's election shows that we can win this war, please share and comment yes we can. H. T. Breitbart The president just revealed secret call he had with Dallas Cowboys that changes everything. It turns out that President Donald Trump has found an NFL team he finally agrees with. It turns out that, after the Cowboys kneeled the other night, the president had a private call with club owner Jerry Jones. During that call, Jones managed to explain his logic to the president and, by the end, Trump was clearly singing the praises of America's team. It turns out that the whole kneeling thing was all part of Jerry's plan because he respects the flag so much. He got his team to go out and kneel before the national anthem. Then they all rose for the anthem and paid respect to our fallen troops. To be honest, that's a pretty smart compromise. It's no wonder Trump was impressed. There is nothing wrong with peaceful protesting. Heck, it's one of the most American things there is. However, it's important to remember that there is a time and place for everything and those 30 seconds dedicated to our fallen veterans before a game is not the time to protest.